Hello everyone, Zap here, and are you ready to go on a journey with me? This is gonna be one magical journey. Follow along this very nice wall of blueness, the tidal wave. And you might be thinking, okay, okay, some OPG, what account is this? This is top 125 account right now, a challenger account. And this is all to show you the new playstyle of the mid lane, okay, the jig is up. I made a tweet about this new playstyle, I got a lot of for it because like oh there's only just a few games it's not like statistically important it's not really the point to prove the statistical analysis just to give you like a hint of what might work because i have very very firm belief qualitatively that it does work but i'm gonna prove to you quantitatively as well when i made a tweet uh i had only a few games it wasn't that much but i told you it's, i feel so much better you have so much more impact in the game right now and this is how you play mid lane now not just Velkus. the entire mid lane has completely changed so ghost mid lane on pretty much any mage should be mandatory right now people still haven't caught up so we're basically abusing mid laners for not running ghost you can do this as well it's it's so good what business do i have being this win rate on a challenger account on a champion that's 47 percent win rate velikas well, among the worst rated mid laners in the world right nobody plays this mid lane anymore ghost is a complete game changer i've played so far 37 ghost games in ranked all high elo like from gm to challenger i have 28 wins and nine losses of, of ghost so if you do math that's just slightly over 75 percent win rate which is remarkable even if you account for a little bit of like luck it's just really good and if you don't even trust that it's like okay too small of a number fair enough it's just the initial study right it's to be replicated and that's you guys and the meta will follow trust me on this one and if you don't trust that trust my initial senses because i'm telling you the entire game has changed and i got an idea to make this video because i got asked today on the stream why am i not taking scorch and more and more mid laners are taking scorch nowadays so i'm gonna show you the runes here and we're gonna talk about scorch i'm gonna go over everything around and why the playstyle works and you're gonna follow along it's gonna be brilliant so this is basically what i run but the whole question is about scorch why is now everyone running scorch more often than before mid lane and my answer is people are very very dependent on lane pressure they only know how to play when they can out pressure the enemy which is fair enough because that's when you're winning lane like if you can out push the enemy if you can get the prior and rotate you're winning and that's very good position to be in uh, that position comes with a lot of caveats but that aside scorch has been norm basically in high elo competitive it's mandatory because if you don't have prios you don't really skirmish with the jungler you don't really rotate and you lose so many games without even playing the game that was before the nerfs every major keystone got nerfed every damaging keystone rune got nerfed everything goes down damage goes overall down and people are too dependent on the pressure playstyle, so they go to the scorch because scorch now has a relatively higher value than before because if the comet was doing twice the damage of the scorch now scorch will be doing like 75 percent of the damage of the comet so now scorch is a lot better than before in relativistic terms but the entire game is shifted and people are still too slow they're clinging to the past playstyle while we're moving forward and funnily enough this forward takes us back takes us back to the old years to the old seasons riot has made a tweet that now the snowball levels are equivalent of that of season eight which is if you guys recall the last good season right the last season before like everything just went to hell the game is so much slower now the keystone nerfs were such a master stroke and and the dragon nerfs in early game and then buff on the soul has been brilliant masterpiece okay the game is back to the old state of playing macro team fights tactics dragons and just complete rotations so it's no longer if your teammates are gonna flip into one kill one crazy assassin flips into one kill it just instantly snowballs the game and you don't get to play that doesn't happen anymore you get multiple chances multiple chances so consistency wins if you're very good and very consistent you will win so yeah while everyone is still busy playing this pointless laning phase not really pointless you can still get advantages in lane but it's not as rewarding as before so i found it way way better to optimize for mid to late game that's where ghost comes in why you pick up tele port on mages is to fix your waves and have better wave management so you don't get out prior or you lose a little bit of experience in cs ghost adds a layer of safety which improves your consistency secondly it improves those skirmishes so you can rotate thirdly it allows you to reposition so much better in mid to late game team fights you're gonna have a lot of examples on the screen here popping up uh you'll see it, it's so brilliant trust me if you if you haven't watched my stream in the last few days this has been a god run we went like from 500 lp to 1100 in, 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 in i think less than a week it's just been remarkable climb and it's all due to the meta shift and the invention of the ghost and also because i uh put another mouse pad 
uh, that I won at Worlds on a 1v1 tournament during Worlds 2019. I put this on top of this mousepad because my old mousepad was scuffed and now I'm way better. Um, that's one of the reasons. <laughs> I did a lot of testing and I found this build the best. This has only been nerfed by 1%, which is not a big deal compared to the other runes, which lost pretty much all of their damage. So going first strike to accelerate you imp improve on your consistency, you get builds earlier, you get very cheap magical footwear. You can kind of swap it around for perfect timing depending on the situation. Some people told me that they run biscuit delivery for easier lane phase and all that i, I kind of go cocky and i believe i can outplay i focus way more in waves and i think minion dematerializer is pretty much mandatory i think it's too damn good i did some testing with approach velocity i think activation range of 1000 is too short it's way better to use cosmic insight because you get the summoner spell haste paired up with lucidity it's just crazy good here we go with celerity to improve upon the movement speed of magical footwear to improve upon the movement speed of, of your ghost it synergizes super well especially if you build items which give you movement speed like magis or cosmic drive or even lich bane we've done and here we go gathering storm which is scaling if you run scorch you're gonna have some like i don't know 400 damage at the end of the game it could turn the tides of some early fights and like a little bit of pressure but that's not really what the goal is we're playing the game we're playing the entire game not just the minor laning state so yeah consistency is key here i'll tend to go attack speed for wave management wave control obviously you have less windows to be punished because there's less downtime in between your auto attacks and it's very important in high elo because people tend to punish you like all these mage matchups are like tit for tat right so if, when you go for an auto attack that's the window for you for you to get punished especially if there's a wrong cannon or if the wave is pushing towards you you're gonna get punished because the enemy mid laner is gonna just crush you so i find attack speed to be super good at wave management a little bit of adaptive force and then you go like either armor or mr depending what you face so yeah how do we do this how do we do this well believe it or not half of these games we basically played against assassins who just don't farm are you saying that 120 cs akali is not gonna win the game instantly guys by just flipping into some free kills she's over double out farmed how pathetic is that people are still so hell bent on playing the old playstyle, which doesn't work they're banging their heads on the wall and they're thinking it's gonna work but it doesn't a lot of these games i'll have twice the cs of the enemy because i'll have 300 enemy akali is gonna have 150 because people just think that they can flip into early wins and snowball from then on but even if they get ahead even if they win at those skirmishes now they're not so rewarding so as long as you play consistently you're gonna get many chances to win at team fights and sieges and enemies don't really end games rapidly anymore that doesn't happen it requires multiple team fights back to back so as long as you trust yourself to position correctly which is where ghost kicks in and how you can manipulate the fight it's all in your power i have never felt this agency before this amount of game impact and control i have never felt this is just so good league of legends right now is incredible to play as a mage player you actually get to play you get to impact i've been talking about this like mythical game impact which many people don't even talk about at all and i've never really heard that many analysts talk about it uh, people really just talk about champion strength but impact is a complete other thing like for example aurelian soul is a really strong character because he scales but he has no impact whatsoever all of his impact comes from enemies making mistakes and your teammates playing well so then you get to scale and then you get to play but you don't have agency yourself you really don't have impact if you play aurelian soul is a miserable experience but enemies will perceive you as strong overall eventually that's the difference in general so now you're actually finally going to have impact before i kept telling you Velkus is a terrible champ you have barely an impact he still is terrible champ statistically speaking but there are ways to actually play the game so i'm glad we finally have a little bit of proof of this because i said out to prove what i've been preaching all along which i play via macro and game knowledge and that wasn't getting well rewarded before because the game was too flippy you would get a bad draft enemies would get one kill your teammate would die once the game is over not anymore i think i've proven that concept that actually is like that and it works like that and there is this mythical game impact and yeah this is the way to play so if you play this playstyle perfectly the sky is the limit you have absolute control of the game despite having a lot of losing matchups a lot of matchups you're gonna play are very very bad for you oriana beats you early game especially with this place like because you're playing a bit slower you have auction who's gonna beat you. you have leblanc who's gonna beat you you have yon who's gonna beat you all of these are losing matchups for you and you'll find yourself early game a little bit behind a little bit struggling in the older patches that would just be doomed for you you would just basically hoping enemies play like shit hoping your team stomps them so you get to play not anymore you can afford to leave 5 10 cs you can afford to lose a little bit of pressure plates aren't that rewarding make sure you make correct decisions 
decisions. It's not worth dying for two CS. It's not worth losing your entire HP for one minion. It's not worth defending one plate in a gank and then you die. Make correct macro decisions. Know how to rotate, where to rotate, how to punish skirmishes, know when you're winning in scenarios and force those scenarios. Look at the map. Remember the mirror rule, where enemies are, count players. If there are enemy four players on the top side, if you cannot counter that, you go bottom side four, man, and try to trade something back down there. And best of all, control the team fights. Control the dragon fights, control the herald fights, baron fights, and pretty much any fight around mid lane and turrets and sieges. Observe who can get you and how position right on the razor's edge. So much that you can do enough damage, but they will not touch you or they will not have enough to kill you. Maybe you can even bait them. Calculate things in advance. I'm telling you, everyone is so late. Be ahead. If you want more games with this playstyle and you want to learn exactly in details how to run it, check out a few videos already that I have. There's going to be way more coming and join the stream, basically. I'll answer any question just like I did the, the one with the Scorch today and we, it, it prompted this whole thing that I want to make this video. Just come into the stream, say hi, drop any questions you want. I'll try to help you out. And yeah, let's climb. All League of Legends is back, baby.